Hello and welcome. My name is Gagan Sharma and today I am going to talk about the ISO OSI model. This is our index. This is how our tutorial will go on. Why do we need standards, protocols or a reference model such as the OSI model? Due to the rapid growth of computer manufacturers and computer networks, compatibility problems among them arose. Over the past few decades, many of the networks that were created used different hardware and software implementations. As a result, they became incompatible and it became difficult for networks using different specifications to communicate with each other. ISO in 1984 released a solution and named it OSI model. The OSI stands for Open System Interconnection Model. An open system is a set of protocols that allows any two different systems to communicate regardless of their underlying architecture. Its purpose is to show how to facilitate communication between different systems without requiring changes to the logic of underlying hardware and software. Commonly referred to as the OSI reference model is a theoretical blueprint, a logical model that helps us understand how data travels from one user's computer to another. It also helps us develop standards so that all of our hardware and software may talk nicely to each other. OSI as a layered architecture. The OSI model is consists of seven ordered layers. These are the physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport, session, presentation layer, and the application layer. Interesting is how these layers are formed, how these layers are named and created. While developing the model, the designers distilled the process of transmitting data to its most fundamental elements. They then identified which networking functions had related uses and collected those functions into discrete groups and these discrete groups are called layers. Each layer defines a family of functions distinct from those of the others. These are the seven layers of OSI model and what they are responsible for. The application layer provides services to user apps. The presentation layer is responsible for data representation. The session layer lets communication between hosts. The transport is responsible for the flow control, error detection and correction. The network layer is responsible for the end-to-end -end delivery and logical address and so on. These are some functions and protocols that come under these layers. Peer-to-peer -peer process. What is a peer-to-peer -peer process? This is a pictorial representation of peer-to-peer -peer process. When data travels from source to destination, each layer of the OSI model at the source must communicate with its peer layer at the destination. This form of communication is referred to as the peer-to-peer -peer process. At the physical layer, communication is direct. The communication is direct only at the physical layer. At the higher layers, however, the communication must move down through the layers on the device A over to device B and then back up to the layers. Each layer in the sending device adds its own information to the message it receives from the layer just above it and passes the whole package to the layer below it. At layer 1, that is the physical layer, the entire package is converted to a form that can be transmitted to the receiving device. At the receiving machine, 
the message is unwrapped layer by layer with each process receiving and removing the data meant for it. This is how data is exchanged using the OSI model. The upper OSI layers are almost always implemented in software. Lower layers are combination of hardware and software except for the physical layer which is almost always implemented in hardware. In this figure D7 means the data unit at layer 7, D6 the data unit at layer 6 and so on. The data exchange process starts at layer 7 that is the application layer then moves from layer to layer in descending order. At each layer a header can be added to the data unit. When the formatted data unit passes through the physical layer it is changed into an electromagnetic signal and transported along a physical link. Upon reaching its destination the signal passes into layer 1 and is transformed back into digital form. The data units then move up through the OSI layers at the device B. As each block of data reaches the next higher layer, the headers and trailers attached to it at the corresponding sending layers are removed. The headers and trailers attached to it at the corresponding sending layers are removed and actions appropriate to that layer are taken. By the time it reaches layer 7, the message is again in a form appropriate to the application and is made available to the recipient. Layer 7, the application layer. The application layer is the OSI layer that is closest to the user. It provides network services to the user's applications. It differs from the other layers in that it does not provide services to any other OSI layer but rather only to applications outside the OSI model. Examples of such applications are spreadsheet programs, word processing programs and bank terminal programs and, and there are many. The presentation layer ensures that information that the application layer of one system sends out is readable by the application layer of another system that is we can call it data representation. If necessary the presentation layer translates between multiple data formats by using a common format. It provides encryption and compression of data also. The session layer defines how to start, control and end conversations which is called sessions between two applications. This includes the control and management of multiple bi-directional messages using dialog control. This layer also synchronizes a dialog between two hosts, the presentation layers and manages their data exchange. This layer offers provisions for efficient data transfer. The transport layer regulates information flow to ensure end-to-end -end connectivity between host applications reliably and accurately. The, trans the transport layer segments data from the sending host system and reassembles the data into a data stream on the receiving host system. The network layer defines end-to-end -end delivery of packets it defines logical addressing so that any endpoint can be identified. It defines how routing works and how routes are learned so that the packets can be delivered. The network layer also defines how to fragment a packet into smaller packets to accommodate different media. The data link layer provides access to the networking media and physical transmission across the media and this enables the data to locate its intended destination on a network. The data link layer provides reliable transit of data across a physical link by using 
media access control addresses that is MAC addresses the data link player uses the MAC address to design, define a hardware or data link address in order for multiple stations to share the same medium and still uniquely identify each other the physical layer the first layer deals with the physical characteristics of the transmission media it is not implemented in software it defines the electrical mechanical procedural and functional specifications for activating maintaining and deactivating the physical link between end systems such characteristics such characteristics as voltage levels, timing of voltage changes, physical data rates, maximum transmission distances, physical connectors and other similar attributes are defined by physical layer specifications. These are the references for this tutorial. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.